Welcome to the power of macroeconomics. The purpose of this lesson is to examine how and why nations grow and prosper. When you read the daily business news, it is dominated by reports of stock price fluctuations, the monthly unemployment and inflation rates, trade statistics, and speculation about whether the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates. But as important as these events are for job hunters or investors, they are only small ripples on the longer wave of economic growth. Year in and year out, advanced economies like the United States accumulate larger quantities of capital equipment, push out the frontiers of technological knowledge, and become steadily more productive. Over the long run of decades and generations, living standards, as measured by output per capita or consumption per household, are primarily determined by the level of productivity and growth of a country. In this lecture, we are going to examine the complicated process of economic growth. In doing so, we will not only come to better understand the critical role that productivity plays in this process, we will also gain some valuable insights into both how and why government policies play a critical role in the growth process. So let's start our journey now with a simple definition. Economic growth represents the expansion of a country's potential GDP or national output. And a closely related concept is the growth rate of output per person. This determines the rate at which the country's standard of living is rising. So what is the recipe for such economic growth? To begin with, successful countries need not follow the same path. Britain, for example, became the world economic leader in the 1800s by pioneering the Industrial Revolution, inventing steam engines and railroads, and emphasizing free trade. Japan, by contrast, came to the economic growth race later. It made its mark by first imitating foreign technologies and protecting domestic industries from imports, and then by developing tremendous expertise in manufacturing and electronics. However, even though their specific paths may differ, all rapidly growing countries share certain common traits. The same fundamental process of economic growth and development that helped shape Britain and Japan is at work today in developing countries like China and India. Indeed, economists who have studied growth have found that the engine of economic progress must ride on the same four supply-side wheels, no matter how rich or poor the country. These four wheels, or supply factors of growth, are human resources, including labor supply, education, discipline, and motivation. Natural resources, including land, minerals, fuels, and environmental quality. Capital formation, including machines, factories, and roads, and technology, from science and engineering to management and entrepreneurship. Let's look at each of these four supply-side factors individually now. 